The overflowing theme of the opening chapter of Philippians is the gospel. Five times in this first chapter, Paul makes direct, explicit mention of the gospel. And I want to draw this to your attention. First, in verse 5, the apostle commends the Philippians for their participation with him in the gospel. And that is always the basis of any, any true fellowship, is that we share the gospel together. And if someone else does not have the gospel in their lives, we have no fellowship with them. And we may have friendship and show them a, a general love, but there is only fellowship in the one true saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why we have to be equally yoked with other ministries that we work with. And we cannot partner with those who are not clear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 7, a second time Paul makes mention of the gospel, Paul affirms them for sharing with him, note, in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. As Paul is in Rome, he is giving defense of the gospel, and as they are there in Philippi, they are giving defense of the gospel. And no matter where a believer is in the earth, there will be opposition to the gospel. There is the offense of the cross, and it is unavoidable. And for all who are believers in Jesus Christ, we must give a defense of the gospel. And then third, in verse 12, I want to draw this to your attention. I want to trace this thread through the first chapter of Philippians. In verse 12, Paul acknowledges that he sees his present imprisonment. He, he is now in Rome imprisoned. And he sees his present imprisonment as working out positively for the greater progress of the gospel. I'm sure you see that there in your verse. And so for Paul, no matter what his circumstances were, he saw it as an opportunity for the gospel to move forward. If he is thrown into prison, he understands. He is there by divine appointment, and there is a reason and a purpose for him to be there. And at the very apex of that purpose, it is the opportunity to give witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no matter where you find yourself in this world, it is for the express purpose of the gospel to go forward. Uh, you may be the only believer in your office, and you may be wondering, why does God allow me to work in such a place where everyone else is an unbeliever? It's a good question. And the answer, according to Paul, is for the greater progress of the gospel. And why would there be unsafe family members among your loved ones? Why wouldn't God just give you all Christians in your family? Well, the answer is God has sovereignly and strategically placed you where He has for the greater progress of the gospel. And even if circumstances seem to be out of control, you have a wreck, you're detoured, you're rerouted, and you are thrown off your schedule, no matter where you find yourself, it is the invisible hand of God that is orchestrating it all for the greater progress of the gospel. And then fourth, in verse 16... Paul speaks of the gospel yet again when he identifies himself as one appointed for the defense of the gospel. Paul's identity, his self-identity, is in the gospel. His, his belief in the gospel and his standing in the gospel, he knows that he has been divinely and sovereignly appointed for the defense of the gospel. And now today, fifth, in verse 27, we see yet another mention of the gospel in this opening chapter as Paul urges the Philippians to conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. Not only are they to believe the gospel, they are to live the gospel. To believe the gospel is only the first step of entrance into the kingdom. 
And the entire rest of our Christian experience is a living for the gospel and conducting ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. Uh, Paul saw his entire existence as being consumed with the gospel. And what is interesting about all five of these references to which I have drawn your attention is none of them stand at the entry level into the Christian life. In other words, believing the gospel and being converted. All five of these deal with believers on down the track, on down the path, as they are living their Christian lives and they are still to be preoccupied with the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be preoccupied with the gospel is very simply just to be preoccupied with Christ himself. For Christ is the gospel. And earlier in verse 21, Paul said, for me to live is Christ. He could have just as easily said, for me to live is the gospel. Because the gospel is Christ. It is Christ in him crucified. Christ. 